Hi everybody, it's Nikki here and welcome to a makeup video. So today is my first update for the Women Who Rock project pan. This was created by, I had to check my book again, uh, uh, CC, Kim and the lovely Ruth. Um, so last month I told you that I was going to be um, researching each of the women as I bring them into the project. However, um, I do not have any rollouts this month, so I am not rolling anybody in. However, I do still want to highlight one amazing woman um, in this video um, because it only seems right um, that I highlight someone in every video um, and this month it has to be Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II who sadly passed away on the 8th of September. Um, it was a sad day for most of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. I will acknowledge that not everyone agrees with the monarchy and its constitution and I understand that there is also some disagreement about the colonies and places that are ruled by Britain um, and our monarchy um, but I don't really want to get into all of that. I just want to highlight the woman, Queen Elizabeth II, the amazing woman who is now the longest reigning monarch of Great Britain. Now I'm going to um, give you some information about her and I'm taking this information from this little book of Kings and Queens of England written by Martine Pugh. It's this cute little square book that goes from um, all the way back to uh, King Egbert, uh, who was um, a king of Wessex between 802 to 839 and was the first Saxon king recognised as sovereign of all England. So it really goes back all the way and goes through all the kings and queens of England. Um, so yeah, this is a great little book um, that just gives just enough information to pique your interest and then you can go off and find uh, books about each individual person as you so wish. Um, my main love of history is the kings and queens of England and Great Britain. Um, that is my main interest so this little book has been absolutely vital to my research and uh, just learning little snippets about each and every one of them and then I'm going off and as I say researching each one on my own time with other more detailed books so it's a great little book um, if you are interested in the the line of kings and queens of England so I'm going to read you just a little bit or give you a little bit of information that is inside this book. There are also some lovely photos in here of um, each king and queen. Um, some are obviously paintings, uh, but um, of the more modern monarchs, we obviously have photos. And this is a beautiful photo of Queen Elizabeth II. She was just such an amazing woman. Um, I'm not a massive fan of, well, I say I'm not a massive fan. I'm not greatly into the modern monarchy um, of England. I'm more interested in the historical monarchy, um, but you can't deny that Queen Elizabeth II was an amazing woman. Now her full name was Elizabeth Alexandra Mary and she was born on April the 21st, 1926. Her parents were George VI and Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, Lyon? Um, and she was born of the House of Windsor. Uh, she became queen on February the 6th, 1952, and she married Philip Mountbatten, um, who was the son of Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark, and he renounced his Greek nationality and became a British citizen, adopting that surname, Mountbatten, uh, before his engagement to Elizabeth. And when they married, uh, King George VI gave Philip the title Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. 
Um, they had three sons and one daughter, that is Charles, Anne, Andrew and Edward. And sadly, as I say, she did die on the 8th of September 2022. Um, now, during the outbreak of World War II, Elizabeth and her sister Margaret um, largely stayed out of London, spending much of their time at Windsor Castle. And from there, she made a famous broadcast um, over the radio. Um, Elizabeth sought to reassure the children who had been evacuated from their homes and families. At the age of just 14, uh, she showed her calm and firm personality, telling them that in the end, all will be well because God will care for us and give us victory and peace. Um, she soon started taking up other public duties and was appointed Colonel-in-Chief of the Grenadier Guards by her father and she made her first public appearance inspecting the troops in 1942 and she began to accompany her parents on official visits within Great Britain. In 1945 Elizabeth joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service to help in the war effort and she trained side by side with other British women to be an expert driver and mechanic. And although her volunteer work only lasted a few months, it offered Elizabeth a glimpse into a different non-royal world. On the 14th of November 1948, Elizabeth gave birth to Charles. Um, and on the 15th of August 1950, Anne was born. Elizabeth learned of the sad death of her father um, and her elevation to the throne on the 6th of February 1952 uh, whilst uh, her and her husband were on a safari in Kenya and she was crowned on the 2nd of June 1953. It was the first televised coronation and was watched by over 120 million viewers in the UK and North America alone. It was a massive event. Unfortunately, at the start of the 21st century, Elizabeth uh, experienced two great losses. Um, her sister, Margaret, and her mother both died in 2002. Margaret dying in February after suffering a stroke. And just a few weeks later, Elizabeth's mother, known as the Queen Mother, died at the Royal Lodge on March the 30th at the grand old age of 101. How remarkable. Um, so obviously, um, Queen Elizabeth has... Um, gone on to celebrate her 60th jubilee and then recently uh, her 70th jubilee i believe um which were both amazing events i remember watching um the big party that was going on outside buckingham palace for the 70th jubilee it was just such an amazing event there was so many celebrities turned up um and <sighs> When I watched the Queen's funeral, it really brought a tear to my eye. I know that so many people really felt her passing away and it showed by the number of people who turned up for her funeral. And she's just such an amazing woman. Even um, when she was there uh, calling Parliament back into um, into the Houses of Parliament um, and she was she was still very much making sure everybody was doing their job making sure everything was in place at, at the grand old age of, of 90 something I can't remember how old she was um, off the top of my head but she was just such a remarkable woman, regardless of the fact that she was the queen. She was just a remarkable woman. And it's sad that she's passed away, but I knew that it was going to happen soon. Um, sadly, her husband, uh, Prince Philip, died a few years ago. And I just felt like, you know... We didn't have long with her. I knew that. Um, so yeah, um, 
What do you think about Queen Elizabeth II? I don't want to get into any arguments about the monarchy um, or any other issues regarding the monarchy. Uh, and I know that Queen Elizabeth II had her issues, um, but she was still a very remarkable woman. What do you think of her? Um, did you watch the funeral? Um, and will you be watching King Charles III coronation when that happens, I believe, next year? I will be. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, let's get into the products. So the first lady that I pulled out was Anne Frank and for that I needed something that makes me feel brave and that was my MAC lipstick in Heroin. I am wearing it today. <clears throat> it's going to start chucking it down because the clouds outside are as black as black. Okay. Um, so I do have MAC Heroin on my lips today. This is a gorgeous Cadbury purple lipstick. So stunning. Really, really pretty. There it is. as a swatch. <clears throat> now, I did do an Instagram post uh, the first time I wore this uh, this month saying that sometimes I question myself whether a woman in her early 40s should be wearing a purple lipstick. And then I apply the purple lipstick and I think, who cares? I love it. It's gorgeous. Why am I worrying? Why am I doubting myself? Um, for one, I'm very lucky in that I don't actually look my age. A lot of people have commented that they only think I'm in my 30s. Great. I will get away with it for a few more years then. Um, but also, why do I care about what other people think with my makeup? It's my makeup. It's my face. And as long as I'm not hurting anybody's feelings, and if, seriously, if me wearing a purple lipstick is really hurting your feelings, that's maybe a you problem than a me problem. But, um, yeah, I love this. I love this lipstick so, so much. So... Um, we do have a 10 usage goal on this product and I have used it three times. In the intro, it weighed 20.60 grams and it now weighs 20.53 grams. The next item I had in was for Harriet Tubman and for that I had my Tammy X um, Tropical Paradise Palette from Makeup Revolution. I have not used this at all this month. Um, I was away on holiday for a week and then when I came back I was ill with a really bad cold given to me by my lovely husband. We share everything. Um, thanks love. Um, <laughs> so for those two weeks I didn't wear any makeup at all so I didn't get a chance to use this palette. The next item, however, was for Julia Childs, and for that um, I needed a food-based item, so I had my coffee palette from iHeart Revolution, and I have used this a total of three times. It's getting darker, guys, it's getting darker. So this is the palette in all its beautiful glory. I have this pink shade on my eyelids today. Um, I am... I do have a 10 usage goal of this and I have used it three times. However, I also am trying to use every shade in the palette. So if you look at my form here, uh, the ones that are colored in red are the ones that I have used. So as you can see, in those three uses, I have managed to use quite a few eyeshadows. That is because I generally do use about four to five eyeshadows on my eye for each eyeshadow look. It's just the way I do my makeup. I don't know how to pair it back. I don't know how to go soft and gentle. I have to go vamp. Um, I don't know why. It's just the way I am. Um, no weight difference on that because obviously it being a palette it's too heavy for my scales. 
The next item is for Beyonce and for that one it was female owned brand and I am using my Lottie London um, blusher in Nick and I have used this a total of three times as well. This has a 22 usage goal on it because with it being a blush I can use it for more looks uh, whereas my eyeshadow palettes I have quite a few eyeshadow palettes in different project pans so I have to break up my time between them so they have a lower usage goal but I am wearing this blush today it is very very pretty it's one of those blushes that is extremely bright look at that um, so it is extremely bright so I have to really really blend it out but once you blend it out it gives such a soft pink um, blush yes it's a pink blush Nicola well done for figuring that one out <laughs> um, but it's a real soft pink flush to the cheek um, and I really really like it the first time I used it not gonna lie I was a little bit worried. I was a little bit worried that I looked a little bit like Aunt Sally from Wurzel Gummidge. Not gonna lie. Uh, so the three uses have made a weight difference. So it went from 32.38 grams to 32.24. So not bad. And the last but not least, uh, the fifth and final one is for Jane Goodall. And for this, we needed a cruelty a cruelty free product and I am using the wet and wild uh, palette in petalette and this was brand new when I brought it in to the project and you can see we have some disturbance now in the pan uh, not much um, but again I've only used this three times I am using the transition shade uh, in my transition area and the crease shade in my crease area <sighs> made sense I am going to say this though, the eyelid shade and the brow bone shade, pants, absolute pants. I tried to put this eyelid shade in my inner corner today, I was really struggling, had to really, really dig my brush in to get it on the brush. It's just, it's it's gone hard pan. Can you see the hard pan? I don't know if you can. Can you see that? it's it's not good and and look at it it's just it's just that's it that that's the eyelid shade what am i supposed to do with that it's just... the first time i tried to use this i was getting so angry with myself i'm really sorry charlotte because charlotte bought this for me for christmas but that eyelid shade is just the worst eyeshadow I've ever tried to apply. Um, it's no good, no good at all. But I do love the transition shade and the crease shade. Absolutely gorgeous, so pretty. I can see myself finishing these two shades and then just de like decluttering the, the palette with the eyelid and the brow bone shade still on. Um, the brow bone shade... <laughs> The brown bone shade is literally just a cream shadow. It's, you can't see it. <laughs> That's how pants those two shades are. Like, um, so I have used this three times. Um, I have used every shade in the palette. Um, it's gone from 25.43 grams to 25.24 grams. I'm just gonna try and use these. It does have a 10 usage goal. <coughs> um, but I can just see myself just panning those two shades and leaving the brow bone and the eyelid shade um, for decluttering. Um, so that is that. Um, that's why I've dipped into the coffee palette, palette a lot um, because I needed something for the eyelids. Um, so yeah there is that so that is my september update for you for women who rock um really still enjoying this project despite not having used too much of this um a lot of the usage has been from the last week <laughs> because i was like i really need to use that stuff 
Um, so yeah, that is my update for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe. And before I go, actually, is there any particular woman that you would like me to research for you and give you information about in my next video? Because I'm happy to do that. Even if I do have a rollout and I will be rolling a new woman in, I will always keep like any names that are suggested to me for a future time when I maybe don't have a rollout. Um, so yeah, let me know. Is there any woman that you are interested in learning a bit more about, but you want me to do the research for you? Um, I will happily do that because researching historical women and anything historical really is my thing. It's, I love to do it. I like it. Um, so yeah, let me know any suggestions in the comment section down below. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!